I think an interesting book is the Bria Bhagavatam Rita. An interesting book is the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita because the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita is, um, is taking up the same knowledge that we find in Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, Srimad Bhagavatam is, uh, is beginning to describe how Krishna is the origin of everything. Jamadi asya yatum vayati tartas tesis And then it begins to describe that pure, unalloyed devotional service, free from karma and jnana, or free from personal desire or desire for liberation, is the goal. Then it describes different incarnations of the Lord, and systematically then goes through pastimes with these incarnations of the Lord. Um, it also describes the creation and the process of creation. And finally, it gets to the tenth canto where it describes the pastimes of Krishna himself. Um, so in this way, the Srimad Bhagavatam is describing different levels of devotion and finally coming to the topmost level of pure devotional service. So Maharaj Pariksit, uh, we may recall, had been cursed by this Brahmana boy Sringi and to die within seven days. And he had sat down on the bank of the Ganges and different sages had, had come and finally Sukadev Goswami came and spoke Srimad Bhagavatam and the whole discussion at one point was completed and uh, still uh, that snake that was invoked by the Brahmin boy Sringi that was supposed to kill Maras Pariksit didn't come. So just then, his mother, Uttara, came, and she came and she said, what about me? Now you have heard everything, you have heard the whole Bhagavatam, uh, and you will leave this world, and you will just uh, uh, go back to Godhead, but what about us who remain behind? Uh, you have to give some you have to give that mercy also to me. So, you know, he goes like, well, you know, I mean, I don't have another seven days, you know what I mean, <laughs> to start the whole thing all over. Right? So then he began to narrate the Priyad Bhagavatam Rita. Uh, and in that Priyad Bhagavatam Rita, there are two stories. Uh, the first part is the story of Narada. And Narada, who is searching for the greatest devotee. So, and the second part is the story of Gopu Kumar. So, we are uh, beginning our discussion with Narada, with the first part. Um, and it is describing how there was a great Brahmana, and this Brahmana was such a nice devotee. Um, he lived in Prayag, there right on the Triveni. And there on the bank of the Ganga, he was making wonderful arrangements, wonderful arrangements for the worship of the Lord. Uh, very opulently, he was making a nice altar all there on the riverbanks. And it was quite an arrangement, a decoration with flowers and various fruits. And that was not everything. He did the puja very carefully and attentively. And therefore, he attracted the attention of Narada Muni. Huh? Because Narada Muni is empowered by the Lord to know what is in the heart of every living being. And he can just appear. So just imagine how much Narada is empowered. Huh? We, uh, okay, we know what's going on in our own mind, in our own heart. And can you just imagine if you would know what would go on in everyone's mind in the room. I don't know if I would want to know. <laughs> uh, imagine, imagine. But Narada Muni has this ability to know the heart of every living being, and, and therefore he can appear right there at the, at the opportune moment. So practically he's empowered like the super soul. 
I mean, what an empowerment. So Narada then appeared in that particular place and he began to glorify that Brahmana and he said, oh, you are such a wonderful personality. He said, what kind of worship you are executing? Everything done so nicely. Everything you have arranged in, in great detail with full attention. Nothing has been done casual. Everything arranged very properly and first class. Everything. You are the greatest devotee. Oh, Brahma said, please, please. Oh, Onada, please don't speak like this. He said, think of it like this. Huh? I am just just a, a simple person who is doing some puja all by myself. He said, but last year, I was staying in a kingdom in South India. He said, and the king, the king there was such a great devotee. He said, like, not only was he himself every day in his palace very nicely uh, performing his puja with, with the nicest offerings, he said, but he was also engaging his whole kingdom and making arrangements to engage others in the service of the Lord. And he kept many nice cottages for visiting brahmanas and pilgrims and no one in his kingdom would go hungry. Everyone was cared for and everyone was engaged in, in sacrifice and worship of the Lord. He said, like, if you see, like, I just made a few arrangements, but if you see the arrangement that that king is making, and so nicely he said, like, I am nothing in comparison to him. Narada became ecstatic. And when in hearing about this king, Narada felt, yes, I want to meet this devotee. I want to meet him. Such a king, I must go there. And Narada, of course, has this mystic power. He can travel at will. Uh, so Narada, uh, shortly after, arrived there in South India. And he came to that king. Uh, but again, the same thing repeated there. Narada was the one to glorify the king, to see all his glories and to just uh, proclaim them one after the other. The king himself was pointing out, actually, uh, I am not that great at all. Uh, in this way, Narada went from one devotee to another devotee. Um, at one point, um, in all his travel and search for the greatest devotee, uh, Narada came to Hanuman. Uh, no wonder. Uh, is there a greater devotee than Hanuman? Is there anyone who is more dedicated than Hanuman? Can we think of anyone? Uh, Hanuman is his total being is, is dedicated to the service of the Lord. There is nothing else. Hanuman will do anything and, em and everything, whatever is required for the Lord, uh, he will do. Uh, Hanuman, in this way, uh, undoubtedly, was such an amazing devotee. So, Narada, Narada went to, to Hanuman. And he began to glorify Hanuman, and Hanuman was very humble. So Hanuman was saying like, no, please, don't glorify me, I should glorify you. Huh? Why are you glorifying me? I am simply engaging in the service of the Lord, and I'm just acting upon his order. And, I'm, and many times uh, I make so many mistakes. Uh, that time when I was supposed to find that herb, it was crucial. Laxman was on the verge of death, right? and I couldn't find it. See, I'm a useless servant I am. Right? All right, finally I brought the mountain and made my Lord search himself. <coughs> See, instead of me searching, the Lord had to search. Oh, I had to search. What kind of servant am I? In this way, Hanuman in humility was uh, explaining how he was not great at all. Um, he's saying, I'm, I'm not great. I'm just trying to be a servant. I'm struggling. I'm not doing a very good job at all. That was Hanuman's mood. Um, and then Hanuman, but, but 
Narada continued and continued and said, no, Hanuman, said, you are so fortunate. The Lord, you know, accepted you as his intimate servant. Uh, you are so dear to the Lord. He, you are his close associate. And then Hanuman said, said, look, you know, look at me. He said, for a short time, I was able to serve the Lord, Lord Ramachandra, in his personal form. He said, but then, mostly, uh, the Lord stayed on this planet and then left the planet and I remained behind in separation. And for a very long time, I'm simply serving the Lord in separation in this Kim Purusha Varsha. Uh, there are these, in Jambudvip, there are nine divisions called Varshas and one is Kim Purusha Varsha. And in this Kim Purusha Varsha, there, Hanuman is always serving Lord Ramachandra in separation with many devotees. And Hanuman said, and that's simply what I'm doing. Huh? I didn't get that much mercy from the Lord. Yeah? Think of the Pandavas. He said, now the Pandavas, they got the mercy because the Pandavas, unlike me, they served a whole life in the association of the Lord. They're so fortunate. The Lord became their servant. Huh? Yudhisthira would send Krishna as a messenger. Sometimes Krishna was standing guard at night outside. Yes, while, while the Pandavas were sleeping. And the Lord is standing guard. Huh? Yes, huh? like that. So that he was so intimate. Huh? He was the chariot driver of Arjun, huh? like that. It is amazing. Huh? I heard a story someone told. Uh, it's one of those someone told. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where it is from. But someone told that sometimes on the battlefield there was so much noise that Krishna could not hear Arjun. He could not hear Arjun. And, and then Arjun would just give Krishna a signal with his foot. He'd kick him, like, with his foot, okay, that meant left, yeah? Other foot, right, yeah? Like this, it said the Lord became the chariot driver of, of his devotee. Um, anyway, all that story, okay, you know, you can uh, keep it as one of those stories someone said. And, um, so don't ask me questions about that. I will just <laughs> refer you to someone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is amazing. It is amazing how intimate Krishna became with the Pandavas. Um, he was so intimate with the Pandavas. So the Pandavas, it is explained, they are very close to, uh, to Krishna. And when Krishna lives in Dwarka, the Pandavas live in Hastinapur, and Krishna regularly goes there. Uh, he goes there. He visits them. And there's exchanges. And the other way around, Arjun goes for some time to Dwarka. So there's that, uh, that exchange, okay. sort of in that realm of, of the Dwarka reality. So, Narada, upon hearing about the Pandavas, became more and more ecstatic. And Hanuman also, as Hanuman was speaking about the, uh, the Pandavas, Hanuman began to dance about the glories of the Pandavas. And then Narada also danced, and together they danced. And then in ecstasy, Narada said, Chalo, let's go, <laughs> yes, let's go and meet the Pandavas. And Hanuman said, let's go and meet the Pandavas. But then as they were about to leave, and Hanuman came down from his ecstasy, he was thinking, no, no, how can I go there? How can I go there? You know, they are too loose, you know. He said, in Dwarka, they are, they are too loose with the Lord. You know what I mean? It's like too intimate, you know, that kind of respect and so on. And he said, I'm afraid that I will make offenses. 
I'm not used to this, you know, I, I'm a monkey, and you know what I mean, I have to, you know, be strict a bit myself, otherwise, you know, if the monkey comes out, then I don't know what, to, uh, what I might do. And so, no, no, I have to, like, I don't think I'm qualified to go there. I'm not qualified. And Alan said, no, no, it's all right, you can come, don't worry. You're a great one, but Hanuman said, no, 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 I cannot go there, I must stay here. So Hanuman just stayed. And then Narada went alone, and then he came to the Pandavas. And in this way we can see how these great devotees are just acting. Um, and uh, one after another, uh, the devotees are feeling that uh, they were lacking in qualification. One by one, huh? one by one, the devotees were explaining again and again that they had no qualifications, huh? no qualifications. From the Pandavas, Narada came to Lord Shiva. But Lord Shiva again was pointing out that he also huh? was just not at all dear to the Lord. Narada came and said, Oh, Lord Shiva, you are Vaishnavam, Yadasyambhu, you are the greatest devotee. Greatest devotee. Huh? But Lord Shiva was pointing out, No, I am not the greatest devotee at all. Huh? He said, like, uh, on several occasions, I got on the wrong side of the Lord. And we had serious fights. Right? And uh, I sent weapons to him. Huh? I sent weapons to him, I sent this Shiva Jwara. That is a very powerful weapon. It is the ultimate heat weapon. It is like it burns everything. So then the Lord somehow or other sent his Narayan Jwara, which is like an ice weapon. Huh? And, and Prabhupada writes in the Krishna book about this, and Prabhupada is writing, he said, okay, heat, you can somehow or other tolerate. He said, but cold. When it gets really, really cold, everything finished. <laughs> okay, that's from the Indian perspective, I guess. <laughs> yes, some Westerners, when they come to India, they are finished. <laughs> it gets garam. Even in, even in India, huh? all day long, people are just saying, oh, garam, garam. Bahut karam, garam, garam, bahut karam. That is the normal, that's what people say in India all day long. Garam, garam, bahut karam, garam. This means hot, very hot, very hot, hot, hot. Garam, garam. <laughs> <laughs> that's normal in India to speak like that. Uh, uh, so, yes. Um, so, Lord Shiva was also pointing out. And his, his lack of qualification and how actually on many occasions he acted unfavorable um, and he saw that so in this way Narada is is gradually showing uh, how devotees are uh, looked upon as being greater and, uh, and little by little it, it, it becomes more and more intimate, more and more intimate. And uh, we see that the, um, the Lord is bestowing special mercy upon his intimate devotees, uh, and that they are getting an opportunity to be in his association, uh, like we see uh, the difference between Hanuman and the Pandavas. Anyway, it was very interesting how Hanuman didn't didn't want to go. Um, so when we think of, of such finer sentiments, uh, how uh, then, then we get to the mood of, uh, of the devotee. Um, the devotee is not thinking of himself. The devotee is thinking of Krishna. And he's thinking of like, uh, how can I be pleasing to Krishna 
not how can Krishna be pleasing to me. But it is a big change, because for a long time we are thinking, how can Krishna be pleasing to me? How can Krishna, how can I fulfill my desires through this bhakti, through this chanting? How can I become happy? We're always thinking, I want to become happy through this chanting, yes. I have tried the world and I'm still not happy and now I've taken to this chanting because I want to be happy. Mm -hmm. So we see that these devotees have gone through that stage. They have left that stage and they have come to the next stage of how can Krishna be happy. And then and that's their whole meditation and then their whole being becomes like that. Huh? Uh, Hanuman doesn't want to cause any disturbance to the Lord, right? Uh, because he's thinking, I am, I am after all a monkey, I have to watch out, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, better I stay here, where there is a proper etiquette to protect me from acting inappropriately, because I don't want to cause any, any offenses or any disturbance to the Lord. It is very interesting. Um, I touched upon it in, uh, in the discussion yesterday or whenever, so many lectures, I can't remember which one. But uh, the topic was, is, is uh, how different pure devotees right, are becoming still further purified in each other's association. Um, I told that story of, of uh, of Hanuman and Sita at the end of the battle and how Ravana had been killed and how uh, Hanuman was ready to kill these Rakshasis, right? And I'll just kill them, it's nothing for me. No, no, Hanuman, not really. No, no, no problem, I'll just kill them. Right? Easy, just takes, takes two seconds, right? No, Hanuman. And then she told the story of the bear, remember? Yeah, you were all there for the story of the bear, good. Well, so we were basically seeing uh, this kind of um, noble mood. So, um, yes, there's another story which illustrates uh, a similar mood. Uh, and it's about uh, the Pandavas. The Pandavas, they were residing in the forest for so many years, as we all know, and in the last, well, just before they would go into the last years, where they, the last year where they had to be incognito, they were staying in a particular forest, and it had been 12 years now. So, Duryodhan had been on the throne for 12 years, a long time. So, you know, I mean, after 12 years, you sort of become established. So, Yudhisthira was doing quite well, uh, Again, Duryodhan was doing quite well, right? Dressed in, uh, you know, nicely, comfortable on the throne, his queens, everything, elephants, all the royal opulence, the white umbrella, everything was there. Yes. So he did good. So <coughs> one day he had a conversation with Karna, and Karna said, you know, Duryodhan, I have this great idea. There is a rumor that the Pandavas are in a particular region in the forest, and he mentioned the name of the place. And he said, you know, he said, like, what if we would go there, and we would just go there and show off the royal opulence just to make them feel, you know what I mean? Doryodhan said, wonderful idea. <laughs> <laughs> really good idea. So, yes, they got ready to go, big army. Duryodhan brought all his queens seated on beautifully decorated elephants with golden seats on top and jewels and decked out in their best outfits. And it was like a very joyous, wonderful caravan that was going towards the forest. And just as they were going on the way, Somehow or other they came past a lake and suddenly this Gandharva comes out of the lake yeah, and says, 
You cannot pass here. This is a kingdom of the Gandharvas. No one can pass here. So Duryodhana is there with a big army, lots of elephants, soldiers and so on, you know, ba -bum, ba -bum, walking there. So there's one, one personality who says you cannot walk here. So he just says, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think you are, you know? Get out of the way. So it became a huge fight, a huge fight, and it turned out to be not one Gandharva. It was a whole army of Gandharvas against the army of, of Duryodhana, and they were fighting a terrible fight. It was a terrible fight, and fighting against Gandharvas for human beings is virtually impossible, um, because they have these celestial powers and so on, and eventually it became impossible. So the Kurus began to lose. They began to lose, not just small time, they began to lose big time, and even Karna had to run for his life. And after Karna had to run for his life, who was left to fight the battle? So at one point, they captured Duryodhan. They captured Duryodhan. Well, the whole battle, it was a big battle, and it was going on not so far from where the Pandavas were in the forest. So, you know, the news, the news reached the Pandavas. Someone came and they heard a big fight. The Gandharvas, Duryodhana, etc. They've captured Duryodhana. So Bhima is saying, hey, hey, good news, you know. These Gandharvas are doing us a big favor. They're saving us a lot of trouble. Um, and then Yudhisthira says, no, 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 Bhima, no. He said, you know, for the but amongst us, there are Kurus and Pandavas. But for the outside world, there are only Kurus. We are also Kurus. He is our brother. We have to go and save him. And Bhima looks at him. What? <laughs> <laughs> we have to go and save Duryodhan? I mean, Bhima couldn't believe it. Nor could the other Pandavas. Arjun was also like, no, what's he saying? What's Duryodhan saying now? But, or what is Yudhisthira saying now? Sorry, mixing up names here. <laughs> what is Yudhisthira saying now? And it's like inconceivable. Um, so the Pandavas were shocked. And then Yudhisthira said, yes, and, and you can go and fight because I'm busy here in some sacrifice, so I cannot go. <laughs> so, you know, it's his idea. And then they had to go. Yeah. Anyway, they went, you know. They went and uh, it, it was a big fight with these, uh, with these uh, Gandharvas. And at one point Arjuna, right, he was really making headway and it was getting, uh, getting tough for the Gandharvas. So the Gandharvas decided to escape and were flying up into the sky and carrying Duryodhan away in the sky. Then Duryodhan, then Duryodhan was like just helpless. He couldn't do anything. And Arjun then suddenly started to shoot arrows at such a speed, continuously, like a machine gun. And the result was that he made a net of arrows in the sky. So that meant he had to keep on firing arrows to keep the net going. But there was a net and it couldn't get through. So. In this way, the Gandharvas, they couldn't get away. Then finally, then the king of the Gandharvas appeared before Arjuna and said, actually, you know, we are sent here by your father Indra, simply to check this Duryodhan. We have, you know, to cut down his false pride. We really have no business in fighting with you, you know. So then Ar Arjuna said, okay, then we turn Duryodhan right now. And, and, so then we, they returned to Duryodhana, it was a peaceful settlement, and the Gandharvas all left and revived all their dead Gandharva soldiers and went off and left everyone alone. And Duryodhana, Duryodhana, oh, he couldn't tolerate it. I mean, it is said, you know, that dishonor is worse than death. Yeah. I mean, saved, saved by the Pandavas, 
I mean, what, what could be worse than that, right? Just imagine, he was saved by the Pandavas. What a disaster, what a disaster. So Duryodhana got so depressed, you know, but still, Ksatya Dharma was dictating that he would offer Arjuna a benediction. He said, what benediction do you want? Arjuna said, I'll take it later. And which he did also later, during the Battle of Kuruksetra. Anyway, then Duryodhana just left that place and he decided that he was going to give up his life and fast. So everyone upset on his side, no, 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 don't do this. Karna was trying to talk him out of it, but to no avail, Duryodhan went into the forest, sat down alone, and started to fast. Then, uh, these, the Daichas appeared before Duryodhan and said, what are you doing? We did a big puja to defeat the demigods, and you are the result of that puja. <laughs> you cannot fast till death. No? And actually, uh, Narakasura, he says, Narakasura has reappeared. He has reappeared as Karna to help you. So in this way, the, then the said, oh, well, I mean, and they said, don't worry, we will help you. You will be successful. So then Duryodhan decided not to die and not to fast and came back and was ready to continue the fight. Um, but just see the nature of Yudhisthira in relation to his brothers. They're all pure devotees, and all pure devotees. But still, they have a relationship among each other and each one has been given a particular role. And uh, we can see how Yudhisthira uh, has been given this role of being the elder brother and to guide the others. And that his vision is just, just completely superior. Huh? Just as Sita's vision was superior to that of Hanuman, although Hanuman is a pure devotee, but she had the refinement of Dharma to see, no Hanuman, don't kill these Rakshas. He said, I'll just kill them, you know. Huh? I'll just kill them like that. In a snap. Nothing for me. <laughs> huh? Yes. But no, uh, no, no, Hanuman. No, Bhima. No, uh, no. So we see uh, how noble these personalities are, right? how much they can put their self interest aside. And therefore, it's not enough to just say, I'm chanting Hare Krishna. I'm chanting my 16 rounds, because remember, this is a seminar about the Holy Name, and I'm telling all stories now, but these stories are pointing, it's not enough to just say, I'm chanting 16 rounds. It's not enough of what you do, it's also who you are. Huh? We have to be, be noble in our character. We have to be, be, be ready to put our self-interest aside. <laughs> very on Kali Yuga. Uh, it's just not everyone uh, is full of self-interest. Yes, uh, everyone. It doesn't matter, male, female, all alike, you know. Uh, Why are you bringing home? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have seen many plays like that, dramas, you know, but there is truth in that. Uh, and, and so on, everyone is thinking you know, self-interest. And we are, so, to rise above self-interest is, is a very deep matter. And as long as we chant with self-interest, yeah, it's not, uh, it will not be possible to really get the full benefit of the chanting. We're looking for a technique. Uh, how can I chant more attentively? Uh, well, try stand on your head, you know. <laughs> uh, have you done? Have you chanted standing on your head? Very attentively. Because <laughs> if you fall asleep, you will fall over. <laughs> so maybe that will work for you, chanting on your head. But some people are so powerful, they can even sleep while standing on their head. <laughs> yeah? And I'm sure. So ultimately, techniques for attentive chanting, uh, they help a little bit. 
And not that they're bad, they have a little bit, but that's not what it's about. It's about a total change of mentality. It is about um, becoming noble, becoming very noble. Becoming, um, that's what we see in saintly persons. They, they sacrifice their self-interest so much. And that is something we have to gradually come to. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Uh, uh, it's a matter of, of practice. Uh, it's, it's about practice. And, but if we do so, yes, then our chanting will become more meaningful. Then we can, can get absorbed. <coughs> so that is, is how we make uh, not cosmetic changes, but how we make some really substantial, deep changes. Uh, and that is what I uh, wanted to speak about. Um, because, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> there he is. Come, come. Aye. <laughs> He's scared of me. Or the door is too heavy. We should. Anyway, um, so like this, we are <coughs> gradually becoming uh, purified. And as we are gradually becoming purified, um, our understanding is, is meant to become refined, you see, more refined, uh, more and more, and it's like quite, uh, just when you thought you were doing okay, you know, you said, I mean, I'm finally doing 16 rounds, took me six years, and, you know, and now I'm on 16 rounds, and doing great, then you get a lecture like this and you realize, oh my God, you know? <laughs> I have no good qualities at all. I'm full of self-interest and this and that. And uh, everyone becomes depressed after lectures like this. Um, Prabhupada also gave a lecture, something like this, how everyone had to just give everything, you know what I mean? Everything. And the whole lecture was like about how, we, how one should just really give himself. And everyone felt like, yes, it was one of those lectures you know, you have to give cent percent, right? And and the mood became more and more fun, like <laughs> everyone was like, but you know, we'll never make it cent percent. So then Prabhupada stood up from the Vyasasan and the Vyasasan had a few steps and then Prabhupada came down the Vyasasan and he said, anyway. 90% will do. He took one more step down. He said 80. At 70% he stepped on the floor. So the last thing was 70% will do. Threw his chowder over his shoulder. And walked away. Uh, so there is also mercy in the end. It is not that. But at the same time, uh, if we try if we try for these, these more noble qualities, but it is not easy, it is not easy at all. Um, uh, in Sydney, I, I made them do the palmistry exercise, and you know, if you look at your hands, and yes, you can look at them, you see, for, it used to be for in the old days that ladies would have the left hand, but to say nowadays in modern times, ladies is also the right hand. <laughs> I don't know exactly why. But, <laughs> so it's, but anyway, uh, last then left hand is last life. Huh? Yeah, these two hands. You can look at different qualities like the thumb. You know, is it flexible? Does it bend backwards? Yeah. If not, if it is a little stiff then you are not very flexible. <laughs> if the thumb is very short, that means you are not really a leader. If the thumb is long, then you are a leader. It says, if the thumb is hidden within the hand like this, 
Then you are under mind control of someone else. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are many interesting things about palmistry. <laughs> I know you like this part. Then we have the, the little fingers, right? Here they are. Yes, you can see. If, uh, they, if, if one is bent, right? It means you are a businessman or lady. If two are bent, it means you are a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> you can put little pieces of wood at night and try to <laughs> your sleep try and make the chip straight. But that is cheating. <laughs> so in this way, yes, uh, our our hands give us a way. Uh, and we have, uh, some of us just have uh, crooked fingers, what can you do? <laughs> you know, so we have all kinds of things in the hand that show up, right? so many things. Uh, and, uh, but we should not forget uh, how Srila Prabhupada stated, if we simply clap our hands in front of the deity, all the lines will change. Or in the nature of devotion, it is said that if we clap our hands, then the sins, they will fly away, just like birds fly away from a tree. Welcome, latecomer. <laughs> <laughs> what is your name? Huh? What's your name? Well, Nandu, welcome. <laughs> Will you stay for a while, or you're going to run away? For a while. That's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. So anyway, um, like this, we have our our palms, and they tell a story. Uh, uh, I don't know everything about palmistry, but a few tricks I I, I, I know, as you can see. And <laughs> um, yeah, there are, you know, there are different lines and. Uh, there's a heart line, and when the heart line is short, then you can see how this person is just lacking in, is insensitive. Huh? Someone with a short heart line, insensitive person. Huh? You can see it in the hand. Huh? Yeah. Which one is the heart line? The heart line. Which one is the heart line? It's the one. It, well, of, of all of them here, it's, it's, it's the, the highest, the top one. So top on the horizontal line, hardly. If it's short, you're insensitive. Mm -hmm. right. A little less. <laughs> Very sensitive. Oh, he is. Softy. <laughs> so, like this, different hands show different things, right? Karma is there. Uh -huh. What can we say? So, we all have our natures, and we all try sincerely to be devotees. And we need each other, uh, we need each other to, uh, to become purified, and, and we all need to take our role. Uh, one nice thing about Pandavas, goodbye, Nandu. <laughs> I knew he wouldn't stay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> He's small. That's all right. Don't feel bad. <laughs> but I knew he wouldn't stay. <laughs> I was like that too. <laughs> uh, so, yes, so then we see amongst the Pandavas that. Uh, they are not envious amongst each other. They are a very interesting unit because there are five and there's no competition. Oh, they just have disagreements, but ultimately they accept. Uh, they accept each other's position. Uh, not that the younger brother is envious of the older brother. You know, I mean, who are you? you know? Everyone is. 
is accepting his role and is uh, and, and that is is very much there um, and they were not envious they could even share one wife at five that's not so easy <laughs> five <laughs> five men sharing one wife with an agreement uh, the agreement was when she's with one the other ones will not come near <laughs> tough huh what a life and think about it I mean, complicated life, but they, they did that because they were so principled, very principled. We are not principled at all. Huh? It's like, you know, what is, what is one's word? Huh? Sometimes, you know, you come to someone and you say, uh, you know, yes, will. so you will do it. And yes, 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 I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And he's laughing in your face, saying yes, yes, and he's not going to do it. <laughs> and he knows it while he's saying yes, 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 I will do it. <laughs> and he laughs and he says yes, yes, and he will not do it. Uh, but Prabhupada, Prabhupada was, of course, a person of the highest caliber. And Prabhupada also attracted attracted a special class of men. Uh, there is a class of men in India, uh, elderly men who Prabhupada attracted. And these men, they were so principled. Uh, I'm slowly, slowly now, they have all left the planet. But I had the good fortune of, uh, of knowing a number of these men. Uh, like there was uh, Mr. Seti, in Bombay. And Mr. Seti, yes, he was a businessman, as his name suggests. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he was, uh, he was uh, influential in Bombay. And he helped Prabhupada with Jew. Right? And at one point, I don't know if you know the whole story, but basically there was this, uh, this, uh, there was uh, Mr. Nair, and he had this block of land, and he would make sales agreements with people where there was a clause, and the clause uh, was that the buyer would have to complete the construction of a building right, within a certain stipulated time. But he knew very well, Nair, that the building regulations were very complicated in the area, plus he had influence there, Yes, he would bribe people and he would hold up the building regulations. And then people couldn't complete the construction within a certain time. And then he would claim that the sales deed was null and void and repossess the land. And he had done it several times with this plot of land. So he was a wrangler who played legal tricks. So he tried to do it with Prabhupada also. And that became the main, main fight. Uh, so, Prabhupada simply, uh, at one point, uh, the building regulations didn't come, but Prabhupada simply put a temple down. He just put it down illegally on the land and put deities inside. Because in India, how can you break a temple? Right? How can you break a temple? So the illegal temple was there, a temporary temple, and the deities were being worshipped there. And then, Naya, he got an order that, to demolish that building, because it was, after all, an illegal building. So he got that order. Uh, and then, the demolition squad came, and they were trying to break that building. Uh, then, you know, uh, Mr. Seti, he went there with his gun. <laughs> he went there with his gun all alone and he just told his man, get off the property now, you know, and I mean it. And it was clear that he meant it. So he held up the demolition for quite some time. Meanwhile, an another group, uh, Giriach, was working on meeting the governor, right? And they went to meet the governor. And the governor then, he overturned that stay order and like demolition of a temple and a big thing and he uh, and, and the press got behind it and so on. 
But at a crucial time, it was Mr. Seti who cleared the, the grounds. Uh, he did it for Prabhupada with, with courage, right? And he was, he was ready. And he sat there alone on a chair. And as long as he was sitting there, no one was touching the temple. <laughs> that was clear. Huh? Yeah, what can we say, huh? Mr. Seti? So Prabhupada attracted such men of high caliber. Huh? I mean, it's easier said than done. One man, you may have a gun, but I tell you, you're only one. And they can also bring guns uh, and to just sit there, but to just have that determination. He had so much determination that he intimidated them. Uh, because uh, I learned one thing. Uh, I learned one thing. I was, uh, I was buying marble in India, in Makrana. And you know, Makrana is such a place. It is like right in the heart of Rajasthan, in the desert. It gets like sometimes temperatures of 55, 56. My hottest day was 59. <coughs> so it is a bit on the hot side. <laughs> so you know, and why in the world would people want to live in such a place? Um, but they live there because they make a lot of money from the marble. So the reason why they live there is greed. You can understand, you know, they live in hell. Right? It's hell. Next to Patala Loka, there's a planet called Makrana Loka. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hell, I tell you that, you know. And there, the residents, the residents on that place are ice cold. Ice cold. And the place, the hell is as hot as can be. But the, the people are ice cold. Right? Ruthless, greedy people. Really ruthless and greedy. Don't become like that. <laughs> so they are just caring about money, 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 money. Uh, and they are very, very vicious people. So anyway, we had to bargain with them. And then I was with, uh, with one devotee from a Jewish background. So the Jews are very tight with money, as you know. You know it goes very deep. Right? It's not just, uh, not just something, you know, it's something very deep. I mean, from a special karma. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot spend. They cannot do it. Uh, it's very hard. So, you know, we got a, we got a good deal. Really, we went to the market, we did well. Because, eh? you know, we played the game of, of like being two and, you know, he would make an offer and then I would argue with him in front of the, of the men. And, oh no, how can you make this offer? This is for the temple, we cannot afford it. No, 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 we'll give you less. You know, we confuse the man and bring down the price. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we did well. Eh? We, we, we had a good deal. And we're back in, you know, the place where we stay. And then this devotee says, no, 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 I can't do it. No, 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 we got to go back. Yeah. We got to go back. I go like, come on, you know, being the whole day in the hot sun, God knows how hot it was, and tomorrow we got to go again. So let's call it a day. We did well. We try again tomorrow. He says, no, we're going back. We got to go back. So oh God, you know, okay, let's go back. So we went back, you know. And then more arguing, more arguing, more arguing. And he got him one paisa per square foot down, you know, as nothing, one paisa, you know. But it adds up per square foot, right? Okay, we bought so many thousands of square foot, so okay, you know, we got a few hundred rupees, we cut off, you know. All right, you know, we saved a few hundred rupees more. And he said, you see, you see, I told you, I told you I could get him down. <laughs> I told you. And he said, he said, you know, I said, how did you know? How did you know that you could get him down? You know, already got him down. Right? How did you know you could get down? He says, it's a matter of desire. He who desires it the most, right? He will win. And it's a matter of desire. This is true. 
if you, it's a matter of desire. So Mr. Sati also was sitting there alone, and it was a matter of desire. He had more desire that this temple would not be broken than the other men had to break it. That's why he won. They were gone. It's a matter of desire. Um, so yes, if only, so how to get desire? How to get desire? Um, desire, one can only get from serving those who have desire. Um, otherwise, no desire. <laughs> this is strong, uh, uh, a problem. We don't have a strong desire for bhakti. We have so many other desires. Because the palms of our hands are showing these desires. <laughs> So like that, um, we must be careful. Um, we must be careful um, to cultivate the right desire by simply serving the devotees. Um, Prabhupada was so humble. Um, there's the story of Dhuva Maharaj, and it's a very nice story. And then within that story, there is one purport that Srila Prabhupada wrote, which is quite special. It comes at the time when Dhruva Maharaj is about to go back to Godhead and he's allowed to enter into a Vaikuntha plane. And he's just attained his spiritual body as he stepped into the plane and he's about to take off and then he thinks, but what about my mother? She was the one who sent me to the forest in the first place. It is by her mercy that I took up spiritual life, actually. She's not going back to Godhead. But then, as his plane is taking off, he saw down there that his mother was also getting into a plane. Don't worry. <laughs> mother can also go. So, mother also was going, and then Prabhupada writes in the purport, he says, yes. And in the same way, he said, if one of my disciples will become a pure devotee, then maybe, maybe they can also take me back to Godhead. And this way, I can also maybe go. So Prabhupada, citing like that in this spirit of humility, uh, and many times he had this mood where he would say that uh, Krishna did not send me any any disciples. Uh, Krishna, Krishna sent me many spiritual masters. He said. Uh, he said because. You are so dedicated. Huh? You're so dedicated, and I'm simply learning from you how to serve Krishna. Um, so, you know, if Prabhupada could, could have this kind of a mood, uh, this, this kind of mood of, of seeing the dedication in everyone and feeling that he could learn from everyone. Yeah, if he could have that mood also, a little bit of it. Uh, then we could, could gradually become servants and rise above self-interest. And then, then we could chat Hare Krishna. Okay, questions or comments? Maharaj, uh, you said, uh, you know, the qualities that one has to imbibe and, uh, you know, develop are more subtler, more... Uh, Difficult as well, you know, and of course takes time. They you know, gradually come. So you know, uh, when we you know look up uh, the bead bag, it says chant and be happy. And what you just said is chant and make happy, kind of. So it you know like uh, it takes time. So I mean, how do you answer the how part also? You know, to serve as well, but you know. Does it depend upon uh, what factors, like how a person can take it up so quickly and whereas the other one would uh, take ages to do the same thing? No. Everyone is, is strong sometimes, everyone is weak sometimes. Um, in this age, no one is always strong. So we all need to, uh, to see that 
that we depend on others. Yeah? And we must see uh, our weaknesses. We, we must learn to know ourselves. We must know in what things we are not strong, in what things, when to lead and when to follow. That we must know. If we want to lead all the time, it will not be good, because we are not always strong. Huh? We are also weak. Same in the marriage. I mean, you know, if one wants to lead all the time, it doesn't work anymore. Nowadays, you know, you have to also also take, everyone has to hear, um, everyone has to be humble, everyone has to look at others and see good qualities. And when we do, we see that uh, they're doing many things nicer than we are doing. Then we must also try to follow in the footsteps. Uh, then we will improve. Uh, and this way, uh, our time will also come. Because, you know, yeah, uh, everybody can do something, right? Uh, some things you can just do a little better than others. It is a talent you are given, you know. Or, you know, like, uh, I forgot now, but somebody had to catch mice for somebody else, right, in the house, because some lady was very afraid of the mice in the, her house, and then, Okay, I think Madan Bahan said, ah, no problem. I just catch them alive, no problem. Throw them out. I don't know how he does it, but he knows how to do it. So if you have any mice, then you know how to call, who to call now. <laughs> He's an expert mice catcher. But, uh, yeah, he said. He's no, but the point that I'm trying to make is not about mice. I'm just trying to entertain you at the same time, you know, make you smile a little. But the point is really that everyone does have strength in some areas. And, and then, yes, they can do. Like, you know, and, and we don't have to be proud. Like, Krishna gave me a little ability for music, but I cannot draw, you know, if my life depends on it. I mean, you know, my lotus flower was not impressive, I know it. <laughs> it's, it's like, I know it very well. I, I know these kids can draw better lotus flowers than I can. And they are shaking their heads now, but they're cheating me. <laughs> see, she's a good, good artist. Yeah, you are. You can see. <laughs> not me. Very bad. <laughs> yeah. But you are good. <laughs> Making nice drawings. Yeah. So like this, we are we have talents and we can recognize it in each other. And you know, someone has a sharp intelligence, right? Someone has a, a good intuition. Right? And you know, all these things have their time, their place. Right? So, uh, if we recognize the good qualities in others, then we can also allow them to lead. And if we can allow people to lead, then we are a community where everyone feels appreciated. But if there's one who is holding all the chips, I am the one who knows all the answers. All of them, you understand. And you just do as you're told, you understand. That's difficult. Any more questions? We have five more minutes. The mother of Nando. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we chant unintentively and we also don't pronounce the mantra properly. <sighs> Barely saying Rama. I, I know all about it, yeah. 
I was sitting in a car and someone was sitting behind me and it was a six hour drive and the black right behind me, you know. A rub, 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 rub. <laughs> I, I tolerated it for two and a half hours, you know, and then, then I asked him politely if he knew another tune. You know? <laughs> So I understand very well. <laughs> I've gone through it. Um, yeah, I've also met a devotee who is every day taking three hours to chant 16 sincere rounds of Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. And I asked him one day, what if Krishna comes? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you think about these things sometimes, right? I know very well what you mean. Yeah, I'm with you. But, 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 but I have read something in the Shastra. Okay, I mean, let me share that also, after the jokes. Um, in the Shastra, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said, and also actually in the chapter of Ajanya, it is mentioned that whether the mantra is, is properly pronounced or improperly pronounced, it doesn't matter. One still gets the benefit. One is still actually getting purified. It's still accepted as, 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 being, as being chanted because the intention is there. So we should not just reject someone just because they chant rub, rub, rub. <laughs> or all the other varieties. I mean, I know many if I get into it. Ah, um, oh, someone going, Kari Krishna, Kari Krishna. Kari, Kari, Kari. Ram, Ram, Kari, Kari. I had to go out of the room. No, seriously. First of all, my obeisance is and then go out of the room. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't concentrate anymore. You know, carry, carry. <laughs> so, no, it is sometimes. It, it gets tough at times. Uh, so the intention is there to chant, but yeah. they're still not attentive. Yeah, they're not attentive. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 we, we said this morning, Pari Hashem, yeah, there was Helanam. Neglectful. Helenum was neglectful. Yeah. So Helenum neglectful chanting also. Still, all these sins disappear from the heart. But whether you immediately get Krishna Prem if you chant like that, maybe it, it, it takes a little bit. But, you know, some people just can't say it by their, by their tongue, you know, like they just can't say Krishna. We had some Chinese person who was saying Rishnam, Rishnam, but very sincere and devotional. So, okay, Krishna will accept. Yes, I'm Rishnam. So the culture is going down, absolutely, and uh, I think we should, but our movement should produce people of high, high moral fiber, high caliber, you know. 
Uh, uh, things like in ancient times we hear money was deposited at grocers, right? There were no banks, you put it with shopkeepers. And there was even no paper signed, nothing. It's just on verbal agreement. Gave you this money, okay. Yeah. Now, you know, poof, you try that too. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, it's like... Uh, no, I do, I do. Amongst devotees, sometimes, you know. But Prabhupada was strict huh, with money, made them sign, and things like this, and we generally make, okay, sign, get receipt, this, that, you know. Uh -huh. No. But we need this kind of devotees, caliber, and we have to become like that and give examples, and yeah, we have to be extremely honest people that live by their word, and uh, that's why I say, we chant, if we chant Hare Krishna, and at the same time, we just out of habit, you know, lie our head off, right? Because we've been doing it our whole life, and we just continue to lie, and we can continue to be dishonest, we can we, we cheat, we do this, you know, just out of habit, really. Not even because we want to, but just, uh, you know, done it, always done like that, so. You just say one thing, you mean another thing, you borrow some money, you just don't pay it back. You you take a book and you just never give it back, you know, like that. And, uh, <laughs> like I, I have a servant who's cried all night because he lost his beats yesterday and he's, he says someone must have taken them. Because <laughs> he left them in the Basadam room and then, he thinks that some, maybe someone ate them, or... <laughs> 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 By mistake. <laughs> they were not pakoras. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, so, you know... You want something like... Uh, a very noble and... Uh, relationship. You know, the devotees are like that, they have these kind of qualities. Oh, uh, then it automatically brings out so much respect, you know, amongst each other. Then we get such relationships. Uh, if we, so we have to try and become like that. Anyway, I'm only speaking theoretically. I'm trying. I don't know how serious I'm trying. Don't. When you sit in the front, you're always in the danger zone. <laughs>